Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and today we're going to be taking a small overview of the UI in Blender 2.8. This overview is meant to help people just starting out in Blender just to get you started in actually using the software. So today I just want to go over what you need to know to get started. So let's jump right in. So to begin with, I would like to sort of explain, well, how Blender's UI is broken up. So Blender's UI is broken up into window-like panes, essentially. So these can be denoted by the curved corners and the dark gutters in Blender's default uh, styling. So you can see this curved corner here and here. And here, this is one window. And we could also tell it's a window because in the top left-hand corner, there's a little drop-down menu. And if we hover over it, it's gonna say editor type. And the blue word in it is telling us what type it is. So currently, this UI is of the 3D viewport type. I can click on this and bring up all the rest of the types. And this is how we can change and swap out different windows. But I'll jump into that just a little bit later. Notice as well that these windows here also have that drop down menu. And we can hover over them and it tells us what its name is. It also tells us below that what it does. So that's something to keep in mind when first starting Blender. If you hover over anything, it is most often going to give you a little clue as to what its purpose is. This is going to be your main window for most of your journey in 3D. This is the 3D viewport. And it's essentially where we can view our scene in 3D. The window below it is the timeline. This window here is the properties and this one is the scene outliner. I'm gonna focus mostly on the 3D viewport and as well as a few aspects of this window here. Another thing to be aware of with Blender's windows is that we can expand them by clicking and dragging on the gutters, making sure that you're getting the uh, little up and down or sideways arrows. We can do that by hovering on the corner. And when we get this cursor here, we can click and drag and we can split that window. Now, a common problem that I see a lot of new users do is when they've done this, they'll try and just drag it back in like this, but it's not going to work as you can see here. What we have to do to get rid of this new one is we need another window of the same size that we can then merge into it. So we merge into it via clicking in the window we wish to keep on the top corner or the bottom corner, and then clicking and dragging into the window we wish to merge into. Voila. Let me do that again. So I'm clicking and dragging to split the window, going to the corner I wish to keep, clicking and dragging into the window, getting an arrow, and then it's merged together. Another way that you may wish to split your area up is you can come over here to the view drop down by clicking it and come down to area. And you have a few options. You got Toggle quad view. You can also hit that once more time. Also notice that there's some text to the side of it, control alt Q. This is your shortcut text and a lot of the uh, in menu items have them and it's a great way of learning the shortcuts. So toggle quad view, control alt Q, let's try it. Control alt Q. And there we go, we've toggled that quad view. So also a very nifty little feature. We can also go to view, area, and horizontal or vertical split. When we click these, we're given a line and we can then click again to split our view. Now, I don't really want this view, so I'm going to click and drag into it this way. Another aspect of Blender's UI is the workspaces, which are these little tabs up the top. Each one consisting of 
a preset number of windows that are useful for a determined task. So, for example, in this case, this is the sculpting. And it's being specifically set up to be very good for people sculpting. Now, of course, you may wish to customize this, but just out of the get-go, this is a good way to jump into different aspects of 3D. Going back to our layout now, we can navigate around the 3D view by clicking and holding the middle mouse button. This is orbiting. We can then add a shift to that to pan, and we can scroll in and out with our mouse wheel to, uh, well, essentially scroll in and out. Now, if you don't have a mouse wheel, perhaps you're using a, a tablet, you can use these items up here to control your UI. So if you click and hold on this one, we can orbit. If you click and drag up and down on this one, we can zoom in and out. If you click and move the hand, we can pan. This camera here essentially snaps us into the camera view and clicking it again snaps us back. And this one down here, now if we read it, remembering that if we hover over any button, it tells us a little clue as to what it is. It says, switch the current view from perspective to orthographic projection. Now, essentially what orthographic projection is, it's a, a perspective type, and I should use the word perspective loosely, um, that gets rid of perspective. So if there was an object far away in our scene, it would show up at its same proportional size. Um, so it's just a good way of working um, with mostly buildings, architecture, things like that, um, and profile views as well. So you can also tell that we're in orthographic or perspective because the word up here, this is our view, um, this is going to change. So notice if I click this, it's changing from perspective to orthographic. Okay, so in our 3D scene, we have a few objects here. We have camera, cube, and light. Now, as I click on these, notice how they turn light orange. Light orange is telling us that it is the active selection. Now, we can select multiple objects, but there's only ever going to be one active selection. This is going to be important later on in your 3D journey, but right now, not so much, but I just want to make you aware that the lighter orange is the active. So if I shift and click on the object, it's going to now become an active, but this is still selected because it's still dark orange. And then if I select a move tool and start moving, it's going to move both of them. I'm just going to hit Control Z to undo that. Now, as you saw there, I both I can be able to select these objects from within the scene itself, as well as from within this scene outliner. So this is really useful if your scene is very busy with a lot of objects. Uh, and we're not going to go into what an object is in this lesson, but we'll definitely touch on that in a future lesson. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified on a new video's release. Now, because we're able to select things from within here and here, it's important that we keep track of everything. So to rename anything within Blender, we just double click and then we're able to rename it. So I'm gonna call this the cube and then I'm gonna press enter. And now that is the cube. Wonderful. Sometimes our UI is going to change depending on perhaps we accidentally click a button on our keyboard. Not to worry, I'm gonna tell you which buttons to press to bring them back. So for example, if my UI becomes something like this and I'm, I've lost my toolbar on the side and that's what that uh, widget is called over here, it's our toolbar, we have two options available to us. We can click on this tiny little arrow here to bring it back or we can press T for toolbar and that toggles that 
on and off. The side menu that you may have saw may have seen just a moment ago is brought up with the letter N. It also has a tiny little arrow in the corner that we can click. We can also drag it back. Now my toolbar is going to look a little bit, my side menu is going to look a little bit different than yours, but it's more or less going to have the same functionality uh, in the tabs that you have. Perfect. So that's how you would bring those back. And they're probably the most important tools uh, within modeling. Another thing that some people get lost on is they don't have a header. So if we actually jump over to sculpting, you see this new menu up here. This is the header. And it includes a lot of great options. Um, but out of the box, it's not included in the layout, but we can always get it by right clicking on any and then show tool settings. And there we have it. Now, because we're in a object mode interaction mode, which we'll get into in another lesson, uh, we're limited in what we can do. And that's another important aspect of Blender that I want to impress upon you. And that is that certain options are visible depending on the context that we're in. So right now we're in something called object mode, which means that we're able to manipulate objects on an object level. And we'll talk about what that means in future videos. But right now that means I'm limited to certain tools. If I was then to jump into edit mode, notice how the menus changed a little bit. So let me jump back out and then jump back in. So our screen changed a little bit. And this is because Blender's UI adapts to what we're currently working on. So for our final piece of information, I want to highlight to you what the most important areas are that I think you should learn before moving on to more advanced stuff. So I truly believe that you need to have a fairly strong understanding on how to split up the window. So as such, you also need to know how to bring the toolbars back using T for this one or N for this one. You also need to know how to resize your windows, how to switch between different windows. And finally, you need to know a few of the tabs within here. So the tabs that you should know are the output properties. This is where you can set the resolution, your output file location, as well as the file format. And you also need to know how to render something. So if you come up here to render, and then you can render an image. Don't render an animation just yet because it's going to chuck out a lot of frames essentially, because right now we're set to PNG. So it's essentially going to spit out 250 PNG files. But uh, just stick to rendering images for now. So if I render this image, I'm going to get an image of a cube. I can then save that by going to image save as. Then there's the whole saving aspect and it's very similar to pretty much any other software out there where you just go to file, save, or save as. So I know this has been a very basic tutorial but I hope that it has been able to uh, teach you a thing or two about the basics of Blender's UI. Uh, let me know if I've done a good job or if I've missed anything. Give it a like if I, if you think, give this video a like if it's helped you or give it a dislike if you think that I have royally messed up. Again, I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching this video up to this point. I know not, not a lot of you do, so thank you. And leave a comment down below as to uh, which part of this video helped you the most. So thank you so much. My name's Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com signing off.